outlandish comments causing a lot of division and everything like that. And I want to ask you this, even though I know the answer, but they don't. They don't know the conversation in which we had. But I want to ask you this about Charles DeWight. How much of his story is truth? And how much of his story is actually your story? I met Charleston at a, a function that we were doing, uh, Donuts for Dad at Dunbar Hospital. He heard me speak, pulled me over to the table, said he got all these white folks, but he ain't got no programs. Uh, I, you know, I found out that he had access to a lot of our, our young minds. So I gave him one of my books called Chronicles and Memoirs of a Gangster, and I let him get my program, and I said, brother, use the program that you choose. Uh, he asked me to be the executive director of his program, Hype About Hype, at the time. I started finding it kind of uh, odd that he kept sending me and his, his uh, cousin, Jesse Taylor, that's the, the brother that's on the video, um, uh, to different locations when he spoke. And one time I popped up at the school, and he was, he was using my speeches verbatim. And, you know, I just got out of the penitentiary after doing 12 and a half years. I was already kind of confused at the state of what was going on in the neighborhoods. So rather than, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a violent man, you know what I'm saying, but rather than break his job, I just went ahead and separated from him and said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go because he wasn't wrapped like that. And, and his story never made sense to me. Because when he told me uh, what he went to jail for, you know, his claim is that him and four other individuals was robbing somebody for a starter jack, which I never understood because what is five people going to do with one starter jack? You know, y'all going to share it one, 